Welcome back to Bible study, to uh, Paul's letter to the Colossian church. Uh, we've reached chapter 3, verse uh, uh, 18, and we've never skipped in all of the 15 years of Bible study, we've never skipped a verse. So we're going to start with um, verse 19 and go to the end of the chapter. And uh, Alan, good to see you. And, Hi, Tim. And, and Ian. It's a long time since I've worn a three-piece, but, you know, well done. <laughs> keeping, up, keeping up the traditions. The standards. Uh, the standards. The standards. Yes. Thank you very much. So, Alan, you're going to read. Ian's going to pray for us. Yep. Okay. Right, Tim. No, I'm not going to skip verse 18. We don't skip. Okay, Colossians 3, starting at verse 18. Wives, submit to your own husbands, as is fitting in the Lord. Husbands... Love your wives, and do not be bitter toward them. <clears throat> Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing to the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children, lest they become discouraged. Bond servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in sincerity of heart, fearing God. And whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. But he who does wrong will be repaid for what he has done, and there is no partiality. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word and how it speaks into our lives. And Lord, there's a, if there's ever a word that needs to be re-examined and applied to our lives, the Christian homes, it's this word. And so Lord, we pray that we will treat it with reverence, that we would listen to what you are saying in this situation. Lord, that you would speak to all of our hearts the world in which we live is in chaos because we have rejected your laws, your guidance from your word. And we have substituted with what people think and what is best in their own minds. And the result is chaos and families split, children not having the parent and uh, oversight that they deserve. And so, Lord, we pray that we will tackle the issues raised in this passage with clarity, with honesty, and seeking your mind. These things we ask in the name of our Saviour and Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 So we'll start with, uh, should we end the Bible study here? <laughs> we haven't skipped anything, but, you know, we're going to go... There's been some signal interruption and, um, you know, please be patient with us. No, we won't do that. Um, yeah, but, um, Ian mentioned in his prayer that the society in which we live is in confusion over... Uh, and this is very topical and it's going to remain topical, I think, for, for the rest of our days um, in the current culture. You know, where... I could just give an example. You've got... Um, households which can have three members in the household uh, without any so-called binary identification. So you don't know whether they are uh, gender neutral or gender fluid or gender um, specific um, or cisgender. And then a, a baby or, or children grow up within this um, a household. And I, I heard relatively recently, you know, on a chat show talking about babies instead of babies. Um, are, are we allowed to, in this culture, to say what is, what is the biblical perspective? Even well, though we know there are discussions within the church over the meaning of passages, there seems to be a clear distinction between the way the scriptures talk about, you know, uh, gender according to anatomy and well, first how of the all, modern world does. First of all, whatever Christians say is going to be highly 
unpopular for the culture. And what Paul wrote was highly unpopular for his culture, because in his culture it was absolutely the opposite of what we have today. So <clears throat> if you take what I would say the modern, I'm not talking about particular extremes, because there are going to be always extremes of culture that are banging their own agenda. Okay, but let's stick to the norm for today. Mm. And it is still the norm for today. A father, mother, and children forms a household. And that's still normal, irrespective of what various extremes would want to say. Mm. Taking that situation, that situation was also normal in Paul's day. But what was different was that in those days, women were treated as chattel. Okay, women were treated as part of a man's possession. So in a sense, you know, when, where it says, uh, wives submit to your own husbands, would have raised some eyebrows, not because that's not the way women were treated, but because Paul actually said it. Mm. If I were to say, um, uh, Tim, uh, your watch, your wristwatch belongs to you and you're allowed to look at it as many times as you want. You'd say, what Alan talking about? It's so obvious and it's so normal. It's, it, there's nothing that needs to be said about it. Mm. Why is he even mentioning it? Mm. Yeah? Or if I said your phone is yours and you, know, you can use it to make phone calls, you'd say, well, of course, the, the, the reaction would be, why is he talking about this? Mm. There are parallel passages, and I think I'll just mention them and then shut yeah, up. And yeah, then and, then, and then Ian can... The, 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 Peter wrote a very similar thing in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 1. Wives, likewise, and I think we will have to deal with what, what, what he means by likewise. Wives, likewise, be submissive to your own husbands, that even if some do not obey the word, they without a word may be won by the conduct of their wives. And then the other parallel passage is from Ephesians, obviously, chapter 522. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. Mm. Okay. Mm. The interesting thing is in all three, it says, uses the word wife, husband, and also in a couple of them it says, as to the Lord. Yeah. Okay, so Ian, <laughs> opening, I, I think, opening shot. I think Alan's made <clears throat> a very important point that we have to actually read any of these passages with regards to family within the context of uh, is, which is being spoken into. And what has been said here is very radical, as Alan so rightly says. It, it's, it's completely, they would consider this to be extremist. You know, those reading this would consider this to be very extreme. You know, it would be actually completely turning upside down the accepted norms of family life, where... As so extreme in the sense that... No, you know, from their from their yeah, culture, from their culture, from the their women culture are the where women were where women were possessions, mm. where sons until they reached the age of majority were considered to be under the the rule of their 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 parents. In, in, and and literally, you could get to a stage where a parent, if he wanted to, <coughs> could make the son a slave. It, mm. it, it was that extreme. He could actually, if he wanted to, uh, kill his son, and he wouldn't be prosecuted under law. So what is happening here is that Paul is saying something very radical. Now, from our perspective, it looks, it looks uh, as, as restrictive. I, I would argue against it, and I will argue against it. Mm. Uh, it is not restrictive, it's liberating. And I think part of what the, the, uh, these issues that we have in our society at this present time is that we have rejected uh, the Christian um, framework framework of, mm. of, of family life 
and and what and, and replaced it with yeah. whatever something that's progressive that we don't know where it will we, end. we don't know where it is and yeah. where it's going to stop and, and what what it and, and and that's where that's why a lot of the time we we find ourselves in, in difficulties all the time I I would say that um, there is an issue actually from a Christian point of view that some pe some Christians deliberately interpret these verses in a particular way which actually gives them an authority which is not actually supported by scripture and what I mean I'll give an example of that uh, I remember once preaching about family life and went right away through the, all the relationships and we talked about <clears throat> discipline a parent's discipline and someone wrote to me uh, and, and said, I'm so glad you talked about, this is a letter someone wrote, I'm so glad you talked about disciplining children because I beat my children regularly. Mm. You know, now, now what I'm actually saying is that some Christians deliberately interpret these verses to, yes, to, in to, extreme. In extreme, mm. and we have to be very careful. Mm. We have to not only understand it from the context of the, the, what has been written and the, and the day in which it's written, but also interpret it from uh, literally the text and look at the text mm. of what is actually being said here, mm. not what you think it's being said. You know, for example, our understanding of submission is, is, is about um, our understanding of authority. Um, the, 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 uh, the word authority, there are two main words, Greek words, which are used in the New Testament to describe authority. The third, first is athutein, from which we get the word authority, which means that um, it means authority, uh, imposed authority. Mm. And it's always used in a negative sense. I can't think of one positive sense where it's used. In a, but most of the time, the word authority is the word ekousia, which means ex, out of his being. In other words, the authority comes out of a person's... Who they are. Who they are. I mean, for example, they said that Jesus spoke with authority. And that word used is ekousia, because he was spiritual and there was something about him. Now, you've got to understand all these verses about submission mm. and authority, understanding what the Bible means when it talks about authority. Mm. It means about spiritual being, right? You, you, know, you know, your children will obey you if they see in you something of Christ. Do, mm. Absolutely. Uh, could I uh, um, just spool back a little to what I said at the beginning. The, the, um, there is definitely a culture war uh, going on, uh, but it's not just a culture war, let's say, against uh, between Christians and those who don't hold to the Christian framework. There, there, there are many ethnic minorities who are um, uh, feeling persecuted by this, the new trends, which there's almost a sort of colonialist, racist overtone to it because of the fact that, you know, so many of these communities are following what you said is the norm and they are uh, isolated because the drive towards changing this norm is coming from white Anglo-Saxons, if not, you know, wasps, pro they're not Protestants, but they are people, they are evangelizing a, a modern liberal world, which is actually at best patronizing uh, the developing world uh, and those from ethnic minorities and those from traditional um, religions and cultures similar to, to uh, right. Christ, the Christian position. But you could say that it is actually racist. What is going on today? It's, it, is, it is persecuting and victimizing um, people who are primitive. So, you, so just to be clear, you're yeah. talking about white Christians in the West. No. Well, I'm, I'm saying no. I'm saying it's not white Christians. It's those who who have come from the white Christian culture, ah. who are white liberals. Ah, I see. Yes. And so they, you know, ah, we are actually yes. here alongside. We're defending not only our position, yes. but we're defending all those traditional so-called primitive 
cultures and right. most ethnic minorities, we are actually in a group which is being persecuted by this bandwagon, yeah, I get, I, yeah. uh, which I would say is, is sort of verging on a, a sort of a, a, a modern colonialist, you know, we know better how you should live. Yeah. And, and so the, 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 and the point I'm making is I don't think we should be so defensive about our traditional Christian position because it's shared by a black and ethnic minority in this country and across the world. And, and I, it, it could be portrayed as actually being um, racist. Um, it could also be uh, portrayed as being anti-other um, minority groups. It's, it's just uh, this bandwagon that's trying to um, uh, redefine gender it, it is not liberal. It's, it's trying to impose something um, uh, 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 new and progressive on, on a traditional framework. Yeah, and that, that's important what you... You I'm see. choosing my words carefully because, no, no, you think, know, we, we are think, the protected characteristic I think, I think, that dare not speak right, his name, right. faith. I would consider myself to be liberal, yeah. but I would be old liberal, right? Mm. The, 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 the people who term themselves liberal these days are so illiberal. Mm. They, 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 are, they are the most in, often the most intolerant people that you can uh, come across. Mm. I mean, uh, liberal, and I'm picking you up on this because yes. I, I, I people know. use this shorthand. I know. Uh, you know, liberal, Christians were traditionally liberal. Yeah. Uh, you know, we came from the Whigs, who came from the Reformation, sorry, they came from the Reformation, came from the, uh, the uh, Civil War, and the Puritans, nonconformist, Whigs, right way through, to the, the early liberal governments, which were called evangelical governments. Mm. Most Christians at the beginning of the 20th century would vote liberal, mm. right? Mm. Now, what I, I would say I am old liberal mm. th that way because, you know, I might find I, I disagree with someone, but, I you know, I would tolerate their disagreement, mm. You know, yeah. you know, and, and I, I would see it something positive. What happens today is that you're not allowed to actually disagree or say something which is a, against what they they consider the they consider to be the norm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you're not allowed to say that, and it's it's a form, or it, it, it's it's the equivalent of, you know, in the dark ages where you know when when someone was declared a heretic. Yeah, that's correct. You know, and, that and, correct. And, 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 and that's that's far from being yeah. liberal. It is the most illiberal. Yeah. I'd, we need to find another tag yeah, I know, I know, for, I know. for this. And I, I know because liberal and conservative usually give polit political yeah. uh, connotations which are, are not necessarily um, so correct. So the, the good thing is we're not in power now. You know, there's no... Qu no one could say that our... Um, traditional interpretation of the scriptures and the traditional Christian framework is ruling the land. So, yeah. you know, in one sense, we're liberated from from accusations of trying to impose this on anyone. We're just uh, honestly and humbly trying to interpret what the scriptures are saying. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and I think we're we're giving it a fair yeah. Um, yeah. A, a position. We're, we're 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 saying, if I can sort of. Uh, summarize it, that, you know, there, there's, there's, a, there's a framework uh, which Paul is setting out that leads to a healthy household. Yeah. It is, yes. He's setting a pattern. He's setting an ideal. <clears throat> and I think he's compelled to do that. I, I know there are <coughs> lots and lots of parallel passages I've already mentioned from uh, Ephesians and uh, 1 Peter. But there are also parallel passages from Ephesians something that we uh, discussed last week or the week before. Paul says, there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and in all. And that's in, equality. That's it. And in, in Ephesians, he says, no, neither male nor female. Mm. <clears throat> so what he d does is he, he sets out this bold statement of equality, equality in Christ. Yeah. But somehow or other, <clears throat> that message by itself could lead somebody to veer in one direction. Mm. And because 
why is it now Can you explain equal? that, how, how, how they could veer in one direction from being all one in Christ? Right. The society in which Paul lived, and also today's society, has divisions. Now, I'm not going to argue which had greater divisions, <coughs> but there, people talk today about the division between rich and poor, mm. the privileged and underprivileged. You look on the news and you see rough sleepers, street sleepers in Westminster and problems with that. So society is divided. Mm. Then you've got the haves and the have-nots. That's not new. That was the case then. In their case, they had slave owners and slaves. They had Romans and non-Roman citizens. Treat treatment being meted out between Different people are treated differently because of their identity, because of who they are. Yeah. Men being treated differently from women. Mm. Greeks being treated differently from Romans, mm. Jews, Just barbarians. interjecting on the, the, the accounts of the resurrection that was given to women. Yes. That, that was very countercultural. Uh, abso ab absolutely. Mm. So what Paul is saying is that there is total an absolute equivalence of value mm. in God's sight. Yeah. So that was radical. Mm. That turned the world upside down. Mm. And that's not the only place he's saying it. In Colossians, he's saying it. Lots of places, Peter, John, they're all saying the same and thing. And of course, we've got, we've got equality. There's probably more, and you'll, you'll develop it further. But we, we've got equality in you know, Genesis 1, all created in God's image, male and female. Yes. He created them. We've got equality in Romans, all have sinned and fallen short. There's no distinction. Yeah. And, and now, um, that's Jew and Gentile and everyone, uh, rich and poor, old and young. Uh, and now we've got an equality in the church in Christ. That's right. Now, because of that equality, if you're using that equality text with your old flesh glasses in that culture, you might well come to the conclusion that wives don't need to submit to the husband anymore. Yeah. And Paul's saying, no, that's not true, because in, in Ephesians he says, husbands and wives submit to one another. Yeah. Because of equality, you can't suddenly, you know, get rid of God's order. God still has an order. The equality doesn't get rid of slavery. It's what you do with it. So what Paul is doing in this passage is a bigger passage than wives and husbands. It's a, it's, it, it deals with lots of things. And going into chapter 4, it talks about masters. So the whole passage is talking about, given that I am turning the world upside down, or Jesus has turned the world upside down with this message, and there is absolute equality of value in God's eyes, what does it actually look like? And he's laying out, well, it's what practical. it actually looks like in practical terms mm. is that you still have to have order, you still have to have authority mm. in, in the sense that Ian was saying mm. earlier. You still have to have structure. You still have masters and slaves. You still have parents and children. You still have husbands and wives. So God's vision for how yeah. families and society and the workplace behaves towards each other, mm. he's spelling it out. Yeah, no, it's very, very helpful because the, let's say the modern liberal with, a, with inverted commas, um, Christians could deselect, select out this scripture and just hold on to the, the other ones yeah. about equality. And that's where they have gone off the rails. Absolutely. So I think we, we've danced around this text yes. long enough. I yeah. think we need to get into the text and yeah. actually, actually talk about what it actually means practically. Because mm. f from a pastoral point of view, I, I'll name some of the issues that <clears throat> sometimes you come across where wives would willingly submit to the authority of their husbands, but their husbands renege on that authority. Yeah. In that word renege, we get the word renegade from it. They're running away 
and uh, from from their God-given role within the husband uh, within the household. Uh, so so that's the, that's the first things. Wives would willingly do that. And then we have, um, for example, we have the situation where wives are actually manipulating husbands in various ways. Actually, if you use the old phrase, wearing the trousers mm -hmm. in, in a relationship. Mm -hmm. um, and what that means is basically pushing down the husband. Mm -hmm. um, and basically to the point where the husband really cannot take his place uh, within the home. Um, the, the, there is, the, as I've said to you before, there are situations where people in Christian homes read this, wives submit to your husbands, and, and basically they use, husbands, men use this as an excuse to verbally or even physically abuse their wives. Yeah. And so those are the sort of pastoral situations we see in the church. Mm. Now, on, with that context, what we need to understand is what we need to look at uh, verses, I believe in pairs, verses 18 and 19 together. Wives, submit to your husband as fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives mm. and do not be bitter towards them. Mm. First of all, we need to try and understand what the word submit means. Yeah. And to understand the word submit, goes back to what we talked about weeks ago about the character and a uh, personality and of Christ, the divinity of Christ. You know that Christ is given as an illustration of submission, being equal with the Father, but taking upon himself the form of a servant. Mm. Um, uh, and in a sense, that's exactly what we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, and so practically speaking, what it might mean is that um, the wife might have a, a strong point of view, but the submissive thing would be for the sake of relationship within the marriage is to submit, mm. right? In the same way, a husband might feel he, he has a right to dominate in this situation. But the loving thing to do mm. would be to submit to his wife. And what I mean by that is, mm. is as it says, we, we submit to one another. And That's that, what it says. Yeah. And, and so what, what, what I mean by that is that there is a structure. Mm. I think more than anything else, what, what is needed more than ever in our society, in our homes, is structure. Mm. Children need to know where they, they are. This is, what, this is what we're saying, where, freedom where, within a structure, where, love where within they, a structure. Where, where they stand. And you, respect you know, within you know, a structure. Um, um, uh, I mean, can I, can I um, dance around it again, Just and then you can tie me back? Um, the, 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 it is central, isn't it, to our understanding of God and Israel, Christ and the church, um, this, this, this structure of man and wife. Can you elaborate on that without uh, me giving you any warning, Alan? <laughs> uh, ab absolutely. The thing is that there are the great covenants in the Old Testament. And if you look at the first verse, the absolute first verse of the New Testament, it says, the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. There are three names in the first verse of the New Testament, mm. okay? There's got to be some significance to it. Mm. So then you've got to look at the three covenants. What is God's covenant with Abraham? What is God's covenant with David? And what is God's covenant with Jesus? Now, Jesus said, I'm giving a new covenant. And the new covenant related to the covenant with Moses, but Moses was not in the line of Jesus. If you look at the genealogy, Moses branched off from Jesus' genealogy. Jesus came from Abraham, David, Jesus, whereas Moses came from Levi, not Judah. Mm -hmm. So he set up the priesthood with Aaron. Mm -hmm. He gave the law, we call it the Mosaic law, and that's Mosaic Covenant, and Jesus says this is a new one. So Galatians makes clear 
that the Mosaic Covenant is done away with, but not the Davidic Covenant, because he's the fulfillment of the Davidic Covenant, and not the Abrahamic Covenant. Okay? Yeah. And God hasn't done away with the Noahidic covenant or the Adamic covenant either. Yeah. So the, the genealogy of Jesus, all those covenants stand. The only covenant that is being replaced by Jesus' covenant when he said, I give you a new covenant, is the Mosaic covenant, but that was never in his genealogy. <clears throat> yeah. So what is covenant? Covenant is, believe it or not, the same as in a marriage. That's right. So God's covenant with Israel through the line, all the way down to Jesus, mm. yep. is similar to a covenant I enter into with my wife. That's right. Okay. A and it's still and in it's the marriage service. So, I mean, it's not as though it's uncommon in the modern world. If you don't have a grasp of what covenant is, mm. and that you are in a covenant, mm. you are one flesh, all talk about submission and things like that, they're not going to make any sense. All Paul is doing is saying, this is who you, the couple, yeah. are. Yeah. The husband-wife unit. Jesus himself said it wasn't like that from the beginning. When, when the Pharisees challenged him and said, what about divorce? Jesus said it wasn't like that from the beginning. Mm. God made them male and female. Yeah. And they become one flesh. And what God has joined, yeah, yeah. you know, let no man divide. It, that's, those are his words to the Pharisees. So if you don't look at your marriage as being inside a covenant relationship, none of this is going to make any sense to you. Yeah. If you try and look at it from a contractual perspective, then there can be abuse on either side. It's not a contractual relationship. It's a covenant relationship. Mm. There is a huge difference. I suppose when the children of Israel <coughs> stood, on, stood on Mount Gerizim, the, you know, they made a corporate, it was like part of this marriage covenant between God and the nation. The thing is, God is sovereign, and we say God is sovereign, and I yeah. believe it 100%. Yeah. But a sovereign God can still bind himself in a covenant relationship whereby he himself, God himself, has to submit to mm. the terms of that covenant. That's right. That's right. Because so God if is wives true. Say, he if won't break his covenant. If wives object to the word that Paul uses about submission, mm. God has already applied himself to that same submission to the covenant he made with Abraham. Yeah. And with David. Yeah. Mm. And Very with helpful. Noah, the, the rainbow. God is subject to not flooding the world again. However sovereign he is, he won't flood the world again because he can't. He can't because he said he won't, and it's a covenant. Yeah. Very, very helpful. I've enjoyed and that. In that context, what I was asking only in that context, it. Paul says, wives submit to your own husbands as is fitting in the Lord. Why, why did he put in that phrase, fitting in the Lord? Mm. In the Lord, because the Lord, Jesus, was the one who gave the new covenant. He had to bring in the Lord, because without the Lord, it's not doable, it's not achievable. Mm -hmm. It has to be in the Lord. This is why, coming back to my very first statement again, why this Christian framework has to be destroyed if this modern progressive world is going to um, uh, be released and prevail. That's why, you know, they, they said in the 1970s, we must destroy the family, we must destroy the Christian framework. It's the seat of our oppression, they said. So th this is fundamental stuff, isn't it? God's, <coughs> God's covenant, God's framework. And what was happening in ancient Rome, uh, Roman Empire when Paul was writing was, those outside of the Christian faith, those outside of the way, Wives were submissive to their husbands, but as a chattel, as a slave. And Paul was rescuing Christianity yeah. out of that yeah. pagan world into one in the Lord. And that's, that's why, and, and as Ian rightly says, you can't just read and stop there. You've got to read husbands, <laughs> love your wives, and do not be bitter toward them. Uh, children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing to the Lord. And fathers, do not provoke your children, mm. lest they become discouraged. So he's now talking <coughs> about the whole family unit 
and the whole family framework, the whole family relationship, and it's all in the Lord. He used those words, in the Lord. Can we, can we unpack, um, thank you very much, can we, can we unpack this, you know, husbands love your wives, as it says in Ephesians, as Christ loves the church. What kind of love are we talking about? Well, the word used here is the word agape. It's yeah. the word used of God's love, yeah. which is an unselfish uh, love, mm. g giving of um, oneself for the sake of others. Mm. Uh, and giving everything. Giving everything for the sake of others. And, and that's really what, and often people said, when they look at these two verses together, the higher demand is on the husband rather mm. than the wife. Because isn't it, more, isn't it a greater commitment to, to love according to the agape than just to submit? Isn't that, right. isn't that more powerful? Just give Ian a few, a few yeah, words. Yeah, yeah, yes, it is. It, mm. it, it, it is the, it is the, mo the more onerous demand, if it, if it is, mm. uh, if it is a demand. We, Sacrifice your life yeah, <laughs> for exactly, your wife, for your wife and family, mm. and family, and that that's really, it's very demanding, and that's where, why we we are in uh, difficulties as a society because we have, you know. A lot of what goes on in the name of marriage is is no, it's it's all about feelings. You know what is good for me. Mm. I'm in this marriage, for, it makes me feel good. Mm. You know, and I'm not saying marriages should make us feel bad, but if we go in with the attitude of selfish, self, selfish, what I get out of it, then you won't get mm. out of it what is designed mm. out of it. I I I it does concern me that, that we as Christians need to um, sell this in a positive way. Yeah. You know, going back to the point you made, incidentally, I would, I'm picking up on words because yeah. I, I think no, words no, are important. Yeah. You talked about progressive, yeah. you know, so-called... In inverted pro commas. I know yeah. you were, well, it, you know, but it's not progressive, it's regressive. Mm -hmm. We're going back to a, to a chaotic, you know, world. Mm. Uh, Savage. And, and what I would what I would actually say is that why we should say that why why do we need structure? Why do we need structure in society? Why do we need structure in the home? Because structure is what gives um, allows people to develop to their fullest extent. That's right. God does not want us to be uh, pushed down. Yeah. He doesn't want wives so much, you know, to be submissive in the sense of that, you know, demeaned. demeaned. Mm. He doesn't want them not to develop wholly as people. Mm. Uh, uh, you know, he, um, he wants all that. Now we do it within a structure. He wants the children to develop to their very best of their potential. The way you do that is within a structure. He wants society to grow. A society. How do you do it? Within a structure. Now, the issue is, of course, and this is, uh, this is where, you know, people challenge, challenge us, is, um, you know, they would say, do you want to go back to a deferential society? Mm. You know, no, I don't want to go. Well, I do, yes, but I want deferential in its right. Def we defer to those who are, have as it were, the, the spiritual leadership, you know, that, that, you know, that we're willing to defer to, mm. or the moral leadership we would <clears throat> defer to. I do not want to go back to a, a, defer, a, a, a deferential society where we defer to someone merely because they've got an inherited title. Although, sometime, right. yeah. although sometimes yeah. that, that might be appropriate, yeah. such as a, the sovereign, you know. Yeah. but but. But generally speaking, I do not want, I, I would not want that a deferential because of that. I would not want a deferential because of someone's managed to get a lot of wealth around them, sometimes inherited wealth. Mm, or stolen. Would, yeah. no, or someone is, we're deferential, <laughs> we're deferential because someone is, uh, you know, is attractive. You, you, know, you know, those are not the qualities and that's what we've got in this celebrity once we've taken this away that's right what we've got is deferred to uh, people with titles deferred to celebrity deferred to wealth deferred to uh, basically attractiveness mm. yeah. and that's what we've replaced this with and i would actually say that what this is saying is yes we defer to one another out of you know out of love 
can I just ping in one of my quotes? Is Thomas Gray, the uh, uh, elegy, uh, where, where he says, let, talking about how those who are wealthy and attractive look down on those who are poor. And it, it's just a couple of verses. Let not ambition mock their useful toils, the poor nor um, their homely joys and destiny obscure, nor grandeur um, uh, uh, here with a disdainful smile, the short and simple annals of the poor, the boast of heraldry, the pomp of power, and all that beauty, all that wealth e'er gave, await alike the inevitable hour. All paths of glory, human glory, lead but to the grave. Mm -hmm. It's a classic because it's just saying exactly what you've said. I, you said something very significant, I think, and that is that, that wanting the best of the, the partner in the covenant. And as we know in Ephesians, it says that, that Christ wants to present his church radiance. You know, he, he, he's, he loves the church. He, he will cleanse her of every spot and wrinkle. He'll make that bride special. That's what a, how a husband should be loving his wife. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, husbands love your wives. To, to, mm. be, to be fair on people yeah. who basically have, have rejected the Christian model, a lot of the time they have not rejected <coughs> the Christian model, as we would explain it, they've rejected a caricature of the Christian Correct. model as it were, the, the mirror image of, uh, you know, the Islamic model where uh, the wife would be in a burqa uh, mm. or something like that. We had the equivalent mm. in, 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 not, not as, she didn't wear a burqa as such, but she was, you know, the little woman. She can't vote because, That's right. you know, she's, she's not clever. And brethren clever. churches, she can't. Yeah, yeah, Same. exactly. By the yeah. way, just interjecting, as we, as we should, as publicly broadcast, um, some of the women in the Islamic world choose uh, uh, to no, submit in that way. No, I deliberately um, use the extreme. That where they're oppressed yeah. to do it, they're yeah. forced to cover up. Oops. You know, I've got that. I was just clarifying yeah, it. Yeah, I, I, I know that. And I'm, I'm not being no, no, I don't, uh, I anti Islamic right. or anything like that. It's what right. I'm actually saying is actually, you know, people who have rejected the Christian model you know, have a point because what they've done is we have, we replaced the biblical model with a, a caricature of a biblical model. We've mm -hmm. defined submission in terms of authority, like a place in a, in a hierarchy. And a value. A va well. va you know, and, and, and such like. And, and children, you know, you know, children were, a lot of people, you know, in schools and in uh, and in, in homes were beaten terribly. I can, mm, I can I remember being in school being beaten. I know. I, you know, well, I was you know, beaten you know, in school. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, by, I the, mean, talk about, by, you know, by the teacher. And, 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 it get, the and, and I, I can remember there were some very vicious teachers who loved to, oh, oh, loved to I, show their authority. I had an beating. ex when I was at Grey Court yeah. Comprehensive. The, the Mr. Mapp, the, the art teacher, used to whack me with, with chalk a chalk X yeah. on the plimsoll, so I'd walk around shamed yeah. by this X yeah. <laughs> of chalk. Um, now that we've cued so, um, you were looking. children, <laughs> now we're on children, Alan. Are, are, do you want to move on? Have you got anything more to say on? No, no, yeah. I, I think that the, the picture of the husband and wife, yeah. really, Paul has drawn out mm. the picture of <clears throat> Jesus and the church, yeah. and that's, that's been covered elsewhere yeah. as well. Mm but he's talking about the full family unit now. So he's moves, he moves on to children. And it's a couplet and then again, fathers. As, as Ian has said, yeah. yes. So, children so, and fathers. So what would, I yeah. want to say, what would you say to a wife mm. who, who basically would love her husband to lead, but is not leading? And the, the house is in chaos because all the responsibility for bringing up the children is on the wife. Mm. Um, all the husbands down the, all, the pub. Well, and, no, no, and, no, and no not, necessarily, not necessarily that, it might be yeah. down the church. You know, yeah, it could be. You know, and and uh, and all all responsibility for 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 bringing up the children in the household, everything in the household, all the bills are paid by the wife, and mm. all sorts of things like that. You know, what do we have to say to that when we when we say submit to your husband? Uh, a very good question, um, and it it does. I, I remember getting into hot water. 
um, citing a, a, a close family member who had been in this situation who believed that it was, it was right for her to continue to fulfil her covenants. Um, of, of marriage when pretty well everyone, even in the church, would say we've got every justification to divorce. Yeah. But she felt before the Lord that she should um, um, take, um, take the, the sacrifice of, of, of that abuse. You, you had a situation in the Georgian times and, and, and the Victorian times with the gin palaces and, and, and the like, and you had, you, you had the, well, these Cruikshank cartoons showing how the men were boozing and the women were destitute. Um, so you have these terribly dysfunctional situations. I don't, I, you're going to answer me because you've had a long experience in a pastoral, pastoral role, um, but it certainly wouldn't be right for me to impose it, uh, on, a, a, as I see it, um, uh, on on a wife, how she should behave in any uh, scenario. Well, well, because would, you're a teacher with authority, you can. Well, I would focus on the husband. Yes. Because the husband it has responsibility. Yeah, but if the husband is completely delinquent, this is what Ian was asking. You well, know, we, we, can, we can shake the, the try and shake of, the living the daylights out of the, the husband. The time, a lot of the time, it's, first of all, I, I would say that, you know, you need to put divorce off the table. You know, you've made a covenant relationship, a commitment to one another. Now you need to work through it. Now, what, what, I, what I would say that, that is, as Alan says, that you've got to work with both, both mm -hmm. the wife mm -hmm. and the husband. Mm -hmm. husband. Um, and and, you've, and you, first of all, you've got to work uh, with, mainly with the husband. I think that the issue mainly in our society is what I would call... Uh, you know, husbands who have reneged on their responsibility as husbands and are not taking mm. their responsibilities seriously. Uh, we have uh, added on to that, <laughs> you know, the, the, what we call serial monogamy, where you've got one husband going around with fathering children all over the place, you mm. know, uh, and, and you've got wives who are mm. completely submissive. It's been beaten out of them, really. Mm. Uh, you know, emotionally beaten out of them. And so you've got that as well. So you've got to start, let's start with the church. First of all, we've got to explain what we, what we mean by submission and using Christ as the example. So we've e done that one. Example. Yeah. We've got to actually talk about what does it mean to love your wife, mm -hmm. to love your family, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. we've, got, we've, got, we've got to work it out practically and talk to these people, you know, practically. What does it mean? It doesn't mean that you just provide for them. It means more than that. It means more than that. So, uh, so, you know, we've, so we've covered those two, but what about the situation where the, the husband doesn't want to know? What, what do you do there? Well, the gospel is transformative. Mm. And so... I'd be looking at <clears throat> some form of transformation mm. in people's lives. Mm. My, wife, my, my, my life is very different from what it was before I was a Christian. It's very different from what it was when I was only a Christian for 10 years or 20 years. Mm. It's different. Yeah. And we are all living transformative lives. Yeah. And I suppose what matters is, is the husband on a path? And is he on a path of transformation? And is he getting any closer to this pattern yeah. that Paul is setting for the whole family? Mm. Is, he, is he getting any better to this pattern of fathers not provoking the children? Yeah. Okay? Mm. If not, there's something wrong with the His teaching. Doctrine. Yeah. There's something wrong with the doctrine, something wrong with the power of God. There's something wrong with the his Holy understanding Spirit. of the power of God. Yeah. Well, no, but if the Holy Spirit is working in his life, irrespective of his understanding, yeah. it depends if the church is a praying church mm -hmm. and if the church is praying So it's for... a responsibility of the church as well, well it's, as... It's a joint responsibility. No, 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 it's it's the husband's responsibility, it. but yeah. it's also the responsibility of the wider church community yeah. and also the responsibility of even people like us That's where right. we go on television and we do have prayer programs where people phone in and ask for prayer mm. and we have a prayer team and people phone in and ask for prayer. Yeah. It's, a, it's a wider 
responsibility of the Christian community yeah, because it's not just the husband in isolation fighting his battles yeah. because when Paul talks about the army and putting on the armor mm. and the shield he's talking about a situation where that shield is useless yeah. because it doesn't protect you from this side what you need is the other soldier on this side with his shield locking here yeah. you're protecting the guy on that side he's protecting you and the whole battalion is protecting one another yeah. that's the way shields work in the Roman army mm. It's not one person with one shield. Yeah. Yeah, so, so Go on. very, very helpful. There has to be, I would say, there has to be a dose of reality in, in the marriage. And I think quite often as, as pastors, we have to bring people into reality. And wh what I mean by that is that um, a lot of TV programs you see these days, particularly light entertainment what I would say is couples come together they live together they get married they get divorced but they remain friends mm -hmm. and they, and you know it, it's as almost as though it's such a wonderful uh, experience it's not like that at all I promise you and that in, and I would say 95% of this 99% of the stage it ends up acrimoniously and so, and so you have to actually say to yourself, and I remember talking to a couple and the wife had come to me and had preached on this a few weeks earlier and she came and she talked to me about her husband. Her husband had a hobby and he was always out. He lived an independent life. He just came home, expected the meals to be ready. And I, and I got the husband and the wife together and I explained to them, you know, this is what you're gonna happen. You know, you, for example, the husband, you know, the, the wife thought, let's get rid of the husband, you know, you know, and it'll be fine. I mm. said, I said, okay, you're going to split your assets. You're going to live in a little flat somewhere and you're going to have no money for the rest of your life because you're not going to get his pension as the law stands, mm -hmm. you know. And, and that brought her home and she said, blum and heck, you know, because she had this vision of, mm. you know, this wonderful independent lifestyle and, you know, yeah. being... Now I said to the husband, I said, I said, you're going to end up your days, and I've seen it so often, you're going to end up lonely mm. and miserable without any companionship at all. You know, you're going to be alienated from your wife, alienated from your family. Is that what you want? Yeah. See, because people have this vision of, you know, out, out beyond divorce is this wonderful green uplands of mm. release. It's not like that at all. Mm. It's not like that at all. You know, you know often you see... You see uh, Dads who see their kids, you know, once a week or once a fortnight on a Saturday morning to take them McDonald's. It's tragic for the kids. It's tragic. And they, have, they, have, and they see another man come into their life, take their place, and it yeah. breaks their heart. Mm. And that's the reality mm. of, of, of rejecting this model. Mm. It's not this wonderful green uplands where everything just carries on wonderfully. You can be friends with your wife, friends like, get a new relationship and still be as rich and everything is well. You know, it's yeah. financially you're going to divide and divide, divide. You're going to be poorer and poorer and poorer. Yeah. So we just just to say we're in the last um, few minutes, couple of minutes, what, last one minute. Um, I think you've hit on it, uh, Alan, with the transformative elements. So, you know, Paul uh, talks about. He says, "I implore you, be reconciled to God." Now, if the husband is reconciled to God, if he's got, if he's God conscious. He would not act in such an irresponsible please, way. Please let me finish what yes, I said. Yes, please do. I, no, because we're in the last minute. Uh, what I would actually say, having laid out what it's like, then you've got to say, now we've got to work at it. But you've got to act, get people living in the real world. Yes. Okay? Before mm. you can actually begin to actually say, look, let's readdress the issue and how we can bring this model into your marriage. Yeah, thank okay. you very much. No, no, it's, it's, uh, thank you. the time, the, the real world is, you know, on television is that we have 20, well, even the music started. Um, so we've managed to get past 18 and 19, and we'll talk about children, fathers, slaves, and masters next week. Thank you very much for bearing with us. See you next week.